You're here to learn about small business. If you turn to page one of your workbook, we will get started in talking about small business tonight. In the 1950s, there were about 93,000 businesses started each year. In the 19, uh, in years 2000, almost 700,000 people are getting into business. At present, small business accounts for 86% of the new jobs. 24 times the innovations for a dollar invested than these large corporations do. As Mr. Cockrell said, you know, you folks are the movers and shakers. And this is the statistics behind this. And the government, you know, encourages people like yourself to start a small business. Later on tonight, we'll talk about tax, uh, to, uh, excuse me, the tax laws, how it affects small business owners. And uh, some of you will say, oh, gee, Uncle Ed, that sounds like tax evasion. That sounds like tax loopholes. I don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. I call these things tax incentives. And why does the government give you these tax incentives? Because you're the one that creates the new products, new services per dollar invested, and much more than these large corporations do. And you don't have to, here's the thing I like to stress, you don't have to do a, a business full time. You know, it, it, you can start off as slowly as possible, part, and I would recommend this if possible, start off on a part time basis. You know, continue working for somebody else. Let somebody else pay your Blue Cross Blue Shield. Let somebody else pay your Social Security. And uh, start this off on a part-time basis. Uh, I know some of you are thinking about starting a business part-time. Some of you got some part-time business right now. Some of you are thinking about retiring. And, uh, you know, but as soon as you start your own small business, whether it's full-time or part-time, whether you're running out of your house or not, you start to be able to write off a lot of things that you can as a business owner that you cannot as, a, as, a, as an employee or a human being. And, uh, I mean, even for example, let's, you know, the, the ultimate example is, see, when I started to get into business, you know, it, it, you had to spend a lot of money on advertising and, and, and inventory and, and uh, you know, a lot of problems. But nowadays, you can get into business basically for no money at all. And that's, and I'm not here to, to, to sell you on this whole thing. But I mean, if you want to get in the business and stick your toe in the water, I'd start selling stuff on eBay. Uh, matter of fact, I believe so strongly in this whole thing. We have just got finished writing a book, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, and being successful on eBay. I mean, think of this stuff. You go downstairs in the basement, you find some junk you don't want, you throw it on eBay, and you sell it or you don't sell it. But as soon as you do that, you're able to write off all sorts of things. Now, if you don't have any junk in your basement, I'd suggest you go next door, break into their house, go down in their basement, steal their stuff, okay, and then put a little advertisement on their door, say, if you want to see your stuff again, it'll be on eBay tonight, you know, but somewhere along the line. But as soon as you start selling, do we have anybody selling stuff on eBay in here? Okay, good. Our question pours in. Yes, sir? What about Craigslist? I'm sorry, what? Craigslist. Craigslist is another good uh, form of advertising, which is? They may know Craigslist. It's free. Yeah. The single richest person on the planet lives out in Seattle, Washington, in that area. His name is Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Where did Bill Gates graduate from college? He didn't. He's a college dropout. Think how ashamed his parents must be. There goes our son, the college dropout, yes. <laughs> Nobody cares in small business. This is not a dramatic pause. I'm just trying to figure out how to, there we go. Uh, middle class, yeah, okay. Um, here's, in terms of women uh, right now, women are still getting paid 20 or 30% less than their male counter counterparts. And this is one of the reasons that women are getting into small business at six times the rate that men are. So that's why people get into small business. The next question is, can you have any fun? Well, Lou Harris did a poll of 2,000 business owners, and what he discovered is that the average small business owner failed uh, the average small business owner, or the people he talked to, two-thirds of them consider themselves successful even beyond their own expectation, and if given a chance to start all over again, fully 78% of the respondents said they would choose to be in the very same business they're in right now, which is a lot of words for saying they're having fun, they're enjoying their life, and they don't want to change. So can you get satisfaction in small business? Absolutely. Now, the next question is, can you make any money? Did you know, according to the IRS, 89% of the individuals that make over $50,000 a year are the owners of small little businesses? And I'd like to call your attention to two things. Number one, you can't get rich working for somebody else. 
If you're interested in working hard, taking on a certain amount of responsibility, but you want to get paid for it, you might want to look where 9 out of 10 people who make over $50,000 a year do, and that's in the area of small business. You know, if you work hard for somebody else, all you get is more hard work. You work hard for yourself, you start to make some money. The second thing I'd like to call your attention to is that these statistics were compiled by the Internal Revenue Service. In other words, this must have been what these people reported on their tax return. I wonder how much money they really made. 